Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Union Pacific Railroad Evanston Subdivision in HO scale. My name is Daryl Cruz, owner and builder of the layout, and your host for episode 45 of season 2022. This episode focuses on the Evanston Yard and some pretty uh, important and major accomplishments or uh, updates for this week. Uh, before we get to that though, make sure you like this video, subscribe, and if you could notify, hit the notification bell, bell so that you can be notified. Also want to mention that we have uh, some things for sale. Some of my end scale stuff, some more signals, houses, and then of course the uh, HO scale uh, bathtub gondolas. Also some uh, Digitrax stuff, some signaling uh, boards and so forth. So uh, just posted a bunch of stuff. Also have a end scale double track bridge that I haven't posted yet, but I'm going to today. Uh, so if you want to take a look at that, see if there's something that you want to pick up, make sure you do that. So this week I worked on the Evanston Yard and this uh, yard ladder. There's a total of eight turnouts here. I did four last week and was able to do four more this week. One thing about doing fast tracks turnouts is that it definitely takes time to do uh, a yard. Here you get a close-up of the fast tracks turnout and... My soldering is not the most precise, but it definitely does the job. And uh, these are the, some of the smoothest uh, turnouts that you'll find. Notice I got everything nice and straight all the way down the ladder. These are number eight uh, turnouts. Most people go with uh, number six turnouts, but I like to make them uh, number eight, it just looks a lot better to me. And you do sacrifice some yard storage, but definitely looks better. And operations is much better. Uh, the first uh, video there was uh, just having all the turnouts in. And then here we also was, I was also able to put in some track. Uh, basically went all the way until it curved. Uh, this coming week, I'll put the rest of the cork road bed around the curve and the rest of the layout here. Now here I have a train coming and you notice it stopped because this turnout here was thrown against it. And uh, what happens is uh, I lean against it and I throw the turnout without realizing it. So while I was working on it I must have leaned on that through the turnout and ended up being against this train and so it shorted out and stopped it. I'm going to have to figure out something for those buttons. Don't want inadvertent uh, throwing of turnouts. Now, while we have op sessions, I will have those buttons turned off. And the dispatcher can turn them on if he wants to give the local crew control over the mainline switches. But for the most part, they'll be off. All right, so I have uh, that end of the yard pretty much done. And, of course, one thing it definitely needs is some cars. So I figured I would take some of the cars that I had at West of Vaco, which is on the upper level here. And I was going to just carry them over to the yard. But I thought, hey, it's a lot more fun to have a train deliver them. So I just simply uh, put them from the upper level down here to the lower level. This is at Emory, right before or between Echo Canyon and the Castle Rock area. This actually will be part of Echo Canyon. Uh, but this is the control point at Emory. And so I just am pulling a string of hoppers from Las Vaco. And this train is going to deliver the hoppers to the yard so we can at least put some cars in the newly finished Evanston Yard. At least the uh, eastern half of the Evanston Yard. Uh, coming up, I'm going to have to work on the west end of the yard. And as you'll see in a little bit, 
the west end is going to uh, involve some curved turnouts, and I do not have a, a jig yet for curved turnouts, uh, so I'm, I'm going to pick up one of those. You see going through some uh, basic scenery. This is not completed scenery, but uh, definitely a lot further along than the rest of the layout. Every time I run a train through here, I kind of get myself excited about doing scenery. It is going to happen here pretty soon, probably sometime just after the first of the year, I'm thinking. Uh, before I get to that, I do want to uh, get the rest of the tracks laid. So I want to finish the Evanston Yard, which will take a couple weeks yet to do. And I also want to uh, finish, or actually uh, com get going on the West Vaco uh, Trona Mine area. So there's a, that's going to take a couple weeks also. So I'm looking at probably a good four weeks or so of track laying still. Uh, and then I am going to start doing some scenery. And I think the f first or the next section I'm going to do is right here at Curvo. I'm going to get this area here done. This is going to be a bridge going over on the upper level, going over the lower level. This actually is a spot on the Evanston sub where they do. The main lines do cross over each other, one over the other. So this whole end of the peninsula, here you can see three trains running. With the main line completely done, it is kind of cool that I can have uh, three, sometimes I have four trains running, two in each direction. But you have a loaded coal train taking coal from Wyoming to Nevada. Looks like we had a tank train on the upper level over there. That's uh, between Aspen and Granger right now. It definitely is a, a, a lot more fun having the main line done when I can have trains running. Sometimes when I'm just working on the layout, I'll have uh, trains running. So while I was installing the turnouts at, at the Evanston Yard, I would have the trains running and have a train go by every once in a while. Definitely makes it a little bit more interesting to work on the layout. So anyway, I want to get this, when we start scenery, I want to get this peninsula done first. And then I'll probably start at um, the west staging yard. Oh, it looks like I have a red here. I think I, yep, I did turn it to yellow. That's not very prototypical. I don't think the train would keep going, uh, anticipating that it's going to turn. But anyway. So back to scenery. I'm going to get the basic scenery done on the peninsula. So that would include the curvo, the end of the peninsula, and then also right here through um, the Wasatch control point. So I'm going to get all this peninsula done with basic scenery. Then I'll probably start over at uh, the West Staging Yard. And I'll probably do, uh, just go around the perimeter of the, of the basement. And I'll do the upper level first, so I'll take... Um, Probably that corner there and do that, the upper level, do the Aspen Tunnels, get that all pretty much done. And then at that same location, then I'll do the lower level also. So I'll do the Morgan area. So I'm just going to go around the basement, do the upper level first, and then follow that up with the lower level and just kind of work my way around that way. And I usually just do the basic scenery at first. Then I'll go around and start doing some ballasting. I might do ballasting as I go around too. We'll see. So 
Sorry about the finger there. All right, so we uh, start over at Emory, went up the Wasatch grade, past the Wasatch control point, and now this is the west throat entrance into the yard. So right here at this corner is, is going to be a bunch of curved turnouts, which is going to be the west uh, throat of the Evanston yard. So the yard tracks are going to start right here. You can see the lines drawn for them. So it's going to be curved here. And then uh, we'll come up here with where we're at right now. You can see some of the cork that's been laid. So hopefully I'll have this uh, done in a couple weeks, maybe three weeks. I think right now we just have three tank cars in the yard. So we're going to deliver these hoppers and place them in the yard so it actually looks like an operating yard. I've been kind of amazed by how much uh, better trains going through here look uh, with the tracks next to a yard rather than just bare plywood. Which is going to be the cool part of doing scenery. It definitely will enhance everything. It'll be nice not to have the uh, white ties for the turnouts. And this is the Evanston control point. And it's going to pull all the way through this control point and then back the cars into the yard. Now normally if this Evanston yard was done, it would have pulled into the yard at the west throat end. But since that's not done, we're going to pull through this control point and then back them in. Now, one thing, one thing you notice about the track going from the main line to the yard is that the yard is at a different level. Notice there's a grade there going from the main line down to the yard. That's about a 1.5% grade. Which actually, you know, looks looks pretty cool with the main line being at a higher level, which is, you know, prototypical. The main lines are have a higher uh, ballast profile, higher roadbed profile than the secondary track. So going from the main line to the yard, from main line to secondary track, it, there is a little grade there. Uh, on the layout, it's basically an eighth of an inch difference, but that's enough uh, to make a difference as you watch the trains go by and see trains on one uh, level as compared to the other. Hey, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, pull these tank cars out of the uh, first track there. The way these tracks are going to be arranged is the uh, track that the cars are on now will be the arrival departure track. So that will be pretty much left clear for uh, trains that are arriving or departing. And then there's seven tracks total, so the number one track there will be the arrival departure and then we'll have five tracks of storage and those five tracks I figured out last night those five tracks will be able to uh, hold 120 cars which is pretty comparable to the yard I had on the Geneva subdivision uh, that yard uh, could hold uh, 140 cars. It had, uh, a, let's see, let me think of, I remember, it had 10 tracks, I believe. Yep, 10 tracks. And one of them was a bypass, so it had nine storage tracks. 
but it was not as long, even scale feet long, as this this yard is longer in scale feet. So it has fewer tracks, but uh, it has longer. All right, so we're going to put it here in track two, which will be one of the five storage tracks. Definitely had a lot of fun actually doing some switching here on the newly completed <coughs> turnouts. Now as I do this, every once in a while you'll see, for the most part, the cars go over the turnouts very smoothly. I don't have a uncoupling tool yet, so I'll just do these by hand. Uh, but there still needs to be a little bit of filing done. For the most part, the cars go through smoothly. Every once in a while, you'll see a kind of a jiggle of the cars. And what I'll do as I am, you know, operating, if I see a little uh, jiggle somewhere, I'll kind of search and see what's causing it and file it down. Get it. Once I have everything filed down, it'll be completely smooth. It already is very, very smooth. And as far as derailments go, there's zero derailments. So um, I like to go beyond just not having derailments. I also want the the uh, cars to go smoothly over the turnouts. All right, so we have three tank cars and a couple of covered hoppers in track two. Then we're going to skip down track four here and put some more covered hoppers one thing that's going to happen when I have this yard completely done is it's going to look pretty empty at first going to need to uh, pick up a lot of cars at Lombard Hobbies I keep seeing some new uh, cars coming online and so forth and tempted to just buy them all but Having to be a little bit more patient in purchases now. Since I don't have very much uh, end scale stuff left, left plus Christmas. Uh, definitely kind of put a crimp on my budget here a little bit. But definitely it's nice to get a lot of stuff for your grandkids. Uh, but once we get to uh, the first of the year try and sell some more stuff um, and sometimes it's better just to get stuff slowly not all at once so in the new year I'll be not only working on scenery but I'll try to pick up more rolling stock I need about five more engines that's one other thing is if I have switchers working here that takes locomotives away from the main the, from the trains so I'm going to have to be purchasing some more locomotives. Uh, but I'm going to be patient on those also. I want some AC 4400s. So I don't really have my eye on any locomotives right now except for... Um, I think I'm going to get one of the SD59 uh, M2s that Atherin's coming out with. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to try and wait for the scale trains, AC 4400s. And so we put, kind of spread them out a little bit in the tracks. It definitely looks better with some cars there. I'll likely have a, tan, a tandem of locomotives on each end so we'll have two locomotives working this end of the yard and then two locomotives working the other end of the yard as well
All right, so the very first switching operations at the Union Pacific Railroad Evanston Yard. And the train will go ahead and park itself in the drill track. Now that drill track is going to go all the way around the curve, so if we need to pull a bunch of cars out of the a track of the yard, there's room to pull them all out without going on to the main line. Uh, one thing I wanted to check is is if I'm able to read the numbers. And I, I don't know if you can see here on the video, but I can read the numbers if I look over. Depends on how big they are. This one was a little bit harder, but I was able to see that one also. It's 506. This one was pretty easy. Uh, it helps that HO numbers are bigger. Um, some of these with a high number board, high numbers are also even easier to see. All right, one thing that's cool about having the yard done is that just watching trains, just the, the whole scene looks a lot better. Uh, here we have a, a train that's having a little bit of difficulty getting up the helix. I have a couple of coal trains that are like 45 cars long and each of them have a number of the Rapido auto flood hoppers which are really nice cars but they're a little heavy and so it takes a little bit of a lot takes the most motor power of any of my trains they're longer of course uh, but they're also heavier but it's kind of cool they're pulling coal so it would make sense that it would be a little bit hard to get it up but it does make it One thing I've also done with the coal trains is kind of mix the cars so there's some of the bathtub gondolas and then some of the auto floods. You notice it has uh, picked up quite a bit of steam. I did kind of go past a couple of the cars so didn't see the whole train. Really like those GATX cars. They're pretty cool looking. Ooh, I have that one backwards, don't I? The last car should be the other way around. So all the red color ends should be pointing in the same direction. And here we'll see a train going by the yard on the Evanston yard level. Kind of see uh, how it looks with uh, two different levels. An eighth of an inch definitely does make a difference. This is a ethanol ethanol tank train. I think we'll get let's get down here at the level then you can't you'll be able to see the difference all right so as you get down lower here you can definitely see how you can see the top of the tanks above the covered hoppers even though the covered hoppers are much taller than the tanks. Pretty cool. All right, more yard work this next week. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm going to have some live video broadcast too sometime this week. I'll have a Thanksgiving special. Look forward to that. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Hope you have a great week. Take care.